Good morning, each and every one. God bless you. Once again, it's great to be with you on a Tuesday morning. I'd like to take you for just a little while to the Word of God and share some things with you from Exodus chapter 4. And we're going to be reading there verse 1 through verse 4. This has to do when the Lord laid his hand upon Moses to lead his people uh, out of Egypt. This is his initial calling uh, to Moses. The Bible said the Lord challenged him with the uh, job of leading Israel. And Moses, of course, let him know that he had the wrong man. He didn't feel that he was quite capable of leading Israel out of the land of bondage. <clears throat> the Bible said, but the Lord spoke to him and said, uh, after Moses told him, he said, Lord, they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice in Exodus 4. For they will say, the Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, what is in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And the Lord said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. The Lord challenged Moses, of course, with a responsibility he felt quite inadequate to fulfill, as many of us do many times when God lays his hand on us for a particular calling. But the scripture tells us that when Moses began to disqualify himself, God began to qualify him by asking him to use what he had. Always remember that God will not ask you for something you can't do. He'll also always only require what you can he asked Moses, what is it that you have in your hand? Of course, God was not asking in the sense that he, God, did not know what Moses was holding. He knew quite well what was in Moses' hand, and any other mortal man would have been able to recognize quite readily that Moses was holding a rod or a stick in his hand. Of course, it was Moses' obedience that was going to open the door to the possibilities of all that God was going to do in Moses' life to convince not only Moses but also Pharaoh that he needed to let his people go. And so Moses was challenged by God to cast that rod down on the ground. And when he cast it on the ground, as I read to you in the text, it became a serpent. Notice what the Bible said. It said there in verse 3, I believe it was, it said, And Moses fled from before the serpent. He fled from before the serpent. You see, the rod was just a stick. But once that Moses obeyed God, it became a spiritual thing. May I say to you today that when you and I step out in faith and we allow God to be a part of the process of what we're doing, the spiritual aspect of it takes preeminence over the natural. It becomes a spiritual thing. When we put things in the hands of God, it becomes a spiritual thing. When we obey God, it becomes a spiritual thing. As long as we are just trying or attempting to do it on our own and under our own strength, then of course it's simply a work of the flesh. But when the Bible says that the Lord commanded him to throw it down, he threw it down, and it became something that was living. In this particular case, it became a serpent. Of course, I want you to know this. God could have done the same thing with a rock. He could have done the same thing with a mantle or a bottle of water. Whatever it was that Moses had, God could have used it and turned it into anything that he wanted it to become. So God was helping Moses to realize that his success was not in what he just had, but rather in his willingness to use it and to let God use it through him. No matter what it is today, no matter what it is today that you and I are facing, the outcome can be victorious. If we're able to muster enough faith to simply obey God, then we can counter the enemy. Our victory will come as a result of allowing God to use what we have. It then becomes a spiritual business. Our gifts in the hands of God will be transformed into something that may even challenge us. You know, the Lord could have turned that rod into a little furry kitten, or he could have turned it into a little puppy, but instead he turned it into a serpent. That became a greater challenge to Moses. Moses. 
You see, my friend, there is a greater challenge in holding what God has used and transformed than when it's just a common recognizable thing in our hands. Once the Spirit gets involved, as it did in verse 3, it turned into something that Moses was afraid of. Moses, in fact, the Bible said, as I stated, he fled from it, he ran from it. But the Scripture says the voice of God came again to him and told him and said, Moses, I want you to pursue it, I want you to catch it, and I want you to pick it up. Now, I believe it probably took a little more faith for Moses to pick that rod up and uh, to handle it the second time uh, than he did the first time. And I can assure you there are times that when we step out in faith and we start believing God for answers and God starts moving and things start to transform, many times it challenges our flesh. And sometimes we may feel a little bit inadequate uh, but know this, the Lord is on our side, and we simply obeyed God. We did what God asked us to do, and so God was in it in the beginning, and he will be in it in the ending. So don't be surprised when God asks you to handle a situation that, in your opinion, it may seem as though it's out of control. Don't abandon the task. Stay with the program. Let God unfold the thing that you have put in his hands. Remember, as I said, God started it. He's still in control, and he'll give you the grace to direct the course and to manage its future. I want you to know today that God's hand is on whatever it is that you've put a man through obedience into his hand. You see, when we read in Scripture, we read on down through the Word of the Lord, we find that in Exodus 7, Amen, that this particular account in Exodus 4 was not the only time that Moses ever threw down a rod and it turned into a serpent. But this time, Moses was a little more prepared. The Bible said he stood before Pharaoh and he said, God told me to tell you to let his people go. And the Lord tells, or the Bible tells us that the Pharaoh challenged Moses and said, what am I to believe you that God actually spoke to you? And the Bible said the Lord spoke to Moses and told him again, throw down that rod, throw down that stick. And when he did, it became a serpent, just like it did there in chapter 4. Here in chapter 7, it has turned into a serpent once again. But of course, this time, Moses doesn't run. Now, if this was the first time Moses had ever thrown it down, and it had turned into a serpent... I've kind of got a feeling that Moses may have let, would have left the throne room and run out the front door. However, the scripture tells us that when this happened, the enemy, the devil, Pharaoh, said to his wise men that were standing there, throw down your rods. And the Bible said that all of their rods turned into serpents also. Of course, we know and understand that God is the one that has all the power. And those rods would have not have turned into a serpent unless God would have allowed them to turn into serpents. But notice what God also did. The Bible said that Moses' rod that he threw down, it said that this rod that Aaron cast down before Pharaoh and Moses cast down before Pharaoh and his serpents that became a serpent, it said that this serpent, it be swallowed up the other serpents are the other rods. The Bible calls it rods. They became serpents, but Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. You see, it was still just a rod. Now, in the eyes of men, it was a serpent. But God was behind all of this, and he said, this is nothing to be afraid of. It's still just a rod. But when they got through and the dust had settled, there wasn't several rods laying on the ground. Matter of fact, those wise men or those enchanters of Pharaoh, they left the room without a rod, without the stick that they walked in there with. Only Moses had the one rod in his hand, and he walked out of that room with victory and the evidence of the fact that God was working in his life. So today I want to tell you, as I come to the conclusion of my little devotion today, I just give it a some thought that could it be in Mark the 16th chapter? And I know different ideas about this particular verse, and some have taken it literally. But the Bible said in Mark 16 and 18, where Jesus spoke to them and said, In these 
promises concerning the apostolic church. They shall take up serpents. And I've heard other people say, well, that's where people get the idea of handling serpents and snakes. No, I really don't believe that. I do believe that God is able to give a healing should anyone pick up a serpent uh, with no intentions whatsoever of trying to handle it, but perhaps unsuspectingly to be bitten by a serpent. I believe the Lord has healing power for that. But I do not believe that God commanded us to literally go out and pick up snakes. I think that's foolishness. But I do believe it could be that God is taking us back to the time of Moses in Mark 16 when he says, you know, the apostolic church in the last days, the Bible said, is going to stand before magistrates and people of authority and power. And God is going to give us the ability to speak words and to demonstrate the power of the Holy Ghost. And whatever it is that God has placed in our hands, God is going to be able to transform it and we're going to have the power to pick it back up again, just like those men did in the Old Testament. God is going to use the apostolic church. And I know that we think we've got limited resources, but I'm telling you, God's not going to ask of us things that we cannot do. He's simply going to use the things that we have. It's so good today to be with you and to share a few things from the word of the Lord. Our prayers are with you today. Go in faith and let God use whatever is in your hand. You have the talent and the ability through the power of God to overcome whatever the adversary brings against you by simply being obedient and letting God use what you have. God bless you today. May the Spirit of the Lord go with you. Our prayers are with you. Go with God and He'll go with you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please like, comment, and subscribe.